Well, I met my ex-wife and fell in love with her when we were working in the same school. So we were both teachers, and teaching is supposed to be a caring profession. And that's how we met. Before my last major attack, I went into work with cuts on my face. And I'm a teacher, right? I've never put makeup on my face before. But my best friend at work said, Paul, what is it going to take? Is, what is it going to take for you to be in hospital, or worse, for something to go and happen? Well, when you enter into a relationship with anybody, you have the rose-tinted spectacles that everything is fantastic. But when we married and a baby was on the way, things started slotting into place. I started to become more isolated from my friends and from my family who weren't allowed to see the new baby. And this happened over a long period of ten years. Well, over the course of time, a number of things would happen at key times. Um, for example, I was locked out of my house and told to leave my house. And my daughter was constantly used as a tool against me. In the middle of the night, she would tell me to get up and leave and tell me where we were going. And I've been left in the middle of nowhere several times. My wallet taken from me, my keys taken from me, no way of getting home. Trying to get home when you've got to travel 120 miles, relying on the kindness of other people. With all that going on, you know, being a teacher, I'm quite good at making notes and putting everything into threes. So I started writing my own diary and I looked at my own data. When it got to three and a half years, it was just a big mind blow, really. It takes a lot for me to share this from my own perspective, but the cohesive control is concerned you're sharing a life with somebody, you never leave yourself wide open. You tell them all your thoughts, your worries, and they use that. My ex-wife knew that I had very strong ties with my family, and that's where she hit me the hardest. I wasn't able to see them, and if there was a glimmer of their numbers on the phone bill, it was, hard, it was just hell to pay. She was trying to hit me where it hurts. She thought I was constantly choosing them over her. To begin with, it was more emotional abuse. In fact, it was constant. It got to the point where it was every day. We were expecting something to happen next. Well, I say we, it was me and my daughter. Because she became a target and I'm not the only survivor. My daughter is at school today. She's 13 and she had to go through what I went through as well. And from a gender point of view, this whole attitude about being masculine and what masculinity is, I very much come down Rob Webb's side of things on how to be a man. In like, I like musical theatre, but it doesn't make me that type of person. I try to do this with the students and give them a whole rounded look on everything that I teach. When I got to the point where I needed to do something about it, those sort of issues didn't hold me back much. The psychological abuse continued during the criminal case. I was giving evidence for five and a half hours in court, and during that time every word that came from the barrister's mouth was my wife's. And even then they passed around photographs of the jury of me. I've lost seven stone. I was much bigger than I am now, and it was a case of look at this big fat hulk. It was the case of how could a person, that she's only five foot one, and how could you do that to this sort of person? They would do in any court case, I guess, rip my character straight to pieces. Well, just from a point of view from a victim of domestic abuse or violence, what, what goes through your mind is whether you're maybe a male or female. Is the people going to believe me? That is the real stumbling block. I chose very early on to have a very small group of friends confined, and I did that over ten years. And to them it did not come as a surprise at all, really. When I reported it to the police, that my head was split open, it, it did cross my mind that it was going to be tough and incredibly difficult. To go to the police station and give a statement, and are they going to listen with a sympathetic ear? It could be a postcode lottery who deals with you as well. I was very lucky in the case that the officer in charge of my case was female, and she had a lot of background dealing with domestic violence cases, and she was incredibly supportive. In fact, she was at my complete rock, really. And of course, I also had my friends, family, and mankind initiative, really. Well, I'm on the road now, and I'm in a much happier place. My past does still haunt me, but I can go home and not walk on eggshells anymore. I'm building a lot of positive memories for me and my daughter. Beautiful.